morning. Good morning. Good to see you on this beautiful <laughs> July is the morning. I always have to stop and think, what in the world is it? July, the last Sunday of July, though, is it not? Um, it's a gorgeous day that it is. Uh, I don't know why you guys are staying away from Ruth. Ruth is a sweet person. <laughs> Where did they all abandon you? Uh, her family was here Thursday. Would appreciate uh, continued prayers, but let you know how things are going on with a couple of people. Uh, Ron Weaker is his home, doing well, still uh, uh, taking it easy, and would appreciate prayers for Ron, but he looks real good. And, uh, we're very grateful it was nowhere as near, it wasn't any worse than what it was. We're going to continue to keep Ted Tittkemeyer in our prayers. Ted was in and out of the hospital, got home yesterday from St. Louis. Would appreciate continued prayers for Mary Lou's Weevil, still recovering from her surgery, from her knee surgery. She's here in town and at Henry County Hospital. And uh, very, very good news, Audrey Sh uh, Schrader, the baby we've been praying for is home. So she got home and they have her on uh, some oxygen stuff that they, some things they have to take care of there at home with her, but she's home and we're grateful for that. Onwards and upwards from here. Were there any other prayer concerns or announcements this morning? It's good to see you one and all. Will you please arise? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God abounding in steadfast love toward us, healing the sick raising the dead, showering us with every good gift. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Just and gracious God, we come to you for a healing of life. Our sins hurt others and diminish us. We confess them to you. Our lives bear the scars of sin. We bring these also to you. Apostle Paul assures us, when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ, nailing the record of our sins to the cross. Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell everyone how much God has done for you.
from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first reading for today is from the 18th chapter of Genesis. Then the Lord said, How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very great their sin. I must go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be it that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I, if I find in Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to him, Suppose forty are found there. He answered, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty are found there. He answered, 
answered, For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose ten are found there. He answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Today we read Psalm 138, and we will read it responsibly by whole verse. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O oh Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Our second reading for today is from the second chapter of Colossians. <coughs> As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come into fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a special circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith and the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him. When he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against <coughs> us with its legal demands, he set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come. But the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels dwelling on visions, puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with the growth that is from God. The word of the Lord. said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. 
and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend. You go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? The Gospel of our Lord. Try an experiment. Let's try an experiment. We need to go over. Here. Let's go over here. We're going to walk over here, and let's see. Take our places, maybe right here in front of these two beautiful women. Let's do that. We're going to use the. We're going to use the pew right in front of you. You two don't mind, do you? Okay. Be an interesting experiment to see if we can do this or not. Now, what we want to do is. We want to see if we can open that door by knocking on that wood. Okay? So I'm going to have you go ahead and sit down. You, you, you can go ahead and sit down if you can just kind of sit down right here if you want to, guys. And then, um, then I want you to kind of reach back so you can watch the door at the same time. See if this works. Okay? I don't know. You can try this at home if you want to. Try this at home. I'm going to sit here. And actually... We can, okay, just take your arm back there with the pews, where the pew is. Yeah, see so you're, so you're reaching one hand back there, okay? And then I want you to knock when I say, after I count to three, and we're going to see if we can get that door to open. Are you ready? You got to knock real hard, but keep on watching the door. Let's go. Here we go, guys. One, two, three, go. Let's see if we <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that was way cool. Wasn't that way cool? You know what Jesus says? He says, you guys got to pray to me all the time. He says, if you pray to me, I'm going to listen to you. He said, all sorts of great things can happen. All sorts of doors can open. All sorts of wonderful things can happen. We need to just keep on praying all the time. And never stop. He says, be persistent, which means we keep on praying all the time. Okay, guys? That's what we need to remember. You guys are good. You can open all sorts of doors with those prayers. Thanks a lot for your help. This morning, guys. We'll see you next week. Make sure you get a children's bulletin, okay? See you guys.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The piano maestro by the name of Arthur Rubenstein said, if I don't practice for one day, I notice it. If I don't practice for two days, my family knows it. If I don't practice for three days, the public knows it. If I don't pray for one hour, then I notice it. If I don't pray for a couple of hours, all those around me notice it, even though they don't know that's the reason that things are going haywire. And sometimes if I would go all day without praying, which I don't remember the last time it was that I did, that I'm sure I would be totally confused, empty, and not knowing where to turn. I am a very strong believer in prayer. And I believe if it's not worth praying about, it's not worth worrying about. If it's not worth praying about, it's not worth giving a whole lot of attention. Martin Luther said, I have so much to do today. I will spend my first three hours in prayer. We pray. We pray, we meditate. The greatest power of prayer, among the all other powers, it has many, many powers, the greatest power of prayer is that it can change us. That's its greatest power. It can change us. I always like that story of the little girl who uh, sets traps for birds. I tell that periodically, but this, uh, her brother was setting traps for birds and she was very upset about it and she went to her mother and she complained, and her mother said, well, go up to your room and pray about it. And so the girl did, and mother didn't see the girl for a couple of hours later, and the girl's happily skipping through the house, and her mother said, whatever happened to that trap your brother was setting to catch, for bir to catch birds? Did you go up to your room and pray about it? And she said, yes, I did. Mother said, well, that's great, sweetheart. Well, then what did you do? She said, then I prayed about it some more. And mother said, that's great. Well, then what did you do? She said, then I prayed about it some more. And the mother said, that's terrific, sweetheart. Then what did you do? She said, then I went outside and I smashed his trap to bits. That's the power of prayer. It can change us. The poet Maya Angelou said, what you're supposed to do when you don't like a thing is to change it. If you can't change it, and change the way you think about it. Prayer helps us do that. Part of the power of prayer is pure meditation, and sometimes we forget that aspect of it. It's just meditative. It's like whatever you can do that hypnotizes you. You know, some people can. Kind of, I like to watch any kind of water that's hypnotizing for me. It's not that I just stare at it. It's that I am in meditation. Can't quite explain it not thinking about anything in particular, but I am meditating. The wind does that for me, watching the wind blow through the trees, blow through corn stalks. I'm thrilled to death that the farmer had corn planted in front of my house. First time in a long time he planted corn there. I am in heaven. Can't wait for the fall to hear that wind blow through the stalks. So meditative, so peaceful. <laughs> Meditation is a strong part of prayer. And I like to say that you can always change people in the world. Prayer helps you do that. But you're not going to change them always in the way you want. You can always change them. Though. And you can, in fact, change the way you look at it. Prayer is empowerment. It's encouragement. Prayer is a sedative. It's a calming thing. Prayer is also something to get us into action. Prayer helps us focus. Prayer helps us understand. As I always say, you cannot really hate someone if you're praying for them. I strongly suggest you try that. Someone who's bugging you, whoever it is that is bugging you the most, whatever you're most irritated about that person, that person, you find them and you pray for them. 
I guarantee you, you cannot be totally bugged by them after a while. When you pray for them. I uh, always pray before I preach, and there was a minister who would always do that. He had a little girl, a little daughter, and his daughter asked him one day, said, what are you doing, Daddy, before you preach a sermon? You always close your eyes, and, and the minister said, well, I am always praying, sweetheart. I pray for God to help me preach a good sermon that means a lot to everyone. And the little girl looked real puzzled and looked up at her dad and said, well, why doesn't he ever do it? <laughs> prayer. Interesting stuff, prayer. Persistence of prayer. The uh, Queen of England, uh, Elizabeth, yeah, you know that person? You ever hear of her recently? You know, she been in the news. Queen of England, a few years ago, went to the country of Nigeria. This is true went to the country of Nigeria. At the time, Nigeria was having a great deal of uh, uh, civil disorder, and they thought it was too dangerous for her to actually mingle with the Nigerians. So what she did was that she toured the set of the BBC, was filming a television series at the time that was showing in England. It was called New Karoo, and they, they filmed it there in Nigeria at their studios. So she went there to the studio, and it looked like it was in... Uh, Nigeria and talked to the actors there and what they did was that they set up a television set so that the actual people of Nigeria would watch her visiting the actors and that's what was shown instead of them communicating with them directly they got to watch her talking to these actors in his show when we pray we are in communication with the creator himself some people think that they have to have a beginning and ending in prayers, and I don't buy that whatsoever. I think prayers can be anything. Prayers can be even thoughts. Sometimes I pray and I don't even realize it's what I'm doing until after I've been praying for a while. I always say that I do not have amens in my prayers. Um, I do, at least not in the sense normally people, normally people think of them. But my, I have this open-end thing. I never close a prayer. My prayers are always open. So I'll go through the day and all of a sudden I start praying, you know what, I don't know what to do about this. What do you think about that? And on and on and on it goes. I do believe that juries very often will decide whether a person is innocent or guilty on the very first day of the trial. It may or may not be true of all. If you served on a jury, I'm sure you guys didn't do that. I think a lot of people do. You kind of decide the innocence or the guilt of the person, and what you do is you listen for the rest of the trial to prove that you're right. And that's the evidence you hear. I think it happens a lot. That's what we do in life. We decide who's guilty, who's not guilty, what's worth it, what's not worth it. And we look for evidence in life to prove that we're right. Prayer helps us to meditate differently, to look at things differently gives us the courage and the strength to actually try to look at things from the standpoint of how Jesus himself would look at them. At family gatherings, I am usually asked to pray. Uh, we had a family gathering a week ago Saturday, and my oldest brother, it was at his house, and he asked me if I would have a prayer. And I usually am the designated prayer, pray, praying person uh, because of my vocation. And I don't mind that. You know, it's okay. Sometimes, though, you know, I want to say, well, you can pray. You know, can't you pray? You can pray. About uh, several years ago, in one of my former parishes, I, my wife calls me up and she said that her car broke down over at the church and asked if I'd come over and pick her up. So it was a Sunday afternoon, so I drove over to, to pick her up. And uh, the parking lot was filled with cars, but I didn't think anything of it or uh, uh, someone from the congregation came up and said that they were having a family gathering there and asked if I would come down and have a prayer before they ate. And I was very irritated, frankly, to be honest. I had my t-shirt on, my sweatpants, you know, and I was lounging around. I didn't feel like going down and praying, you know what I mean? I like to pray, but give me a break. So I said, well, you can have a prayer with your family. And, oh, and we really 
like you to come down and do it. And so I went down and I opened up the door and all of a sudden this huge cry went out, happy birthday, <laughs> my 40th birthday. I had no idea, I don't recognize cars. <laughs> total shock, as it was here a little while back. You never know what's going to happen with prayer is the point. You never know. The girl, there was a little girl who was asked to say prayers before a meal, and the little girl suddenly broke out into tears, and the father asked her what's wrong. She said, well, God knows I don't like broccoli. <laughs> Can't really pray for that. I don't know what to pray for all the time. I don't even know all the time what to pray for when I see someone who's very, very ill. Is it better for them to kind of get a little bit better and live with the illness? Is it better for God to take them? I don't know what to pray for at times when people come to me talking about different situations. I don't know what's always good for them. We can try to talk it out. But what do I know? I just try to help facilitate the thinking about it. I don't always know what to pray for. And I don't always know what to pray, how to pray. So I usually pray for God's healing power, whatever that means. I don't believe there are any sort of prayers one thought again, one word. It can be even convoluted thoughts. Some of my prayers wouldn't make absolutely any sense to anyone, including myself, only to God. We have to give him a little bit of credit for being able to sort it out himself. Help is a prayer. There's a difference between perseverance and stubbornness, you know. Jesus says to be persevere, to persevere in praying. Use perseverance. It's the difference between that and stubbornness, though. Perseverance is a strong will. Stubbornness is a strong won't. Persevere. You will listen. You will open your hearts, your minds, to try to meditate on our Lord. Where should you go? Most everyone knows they need healing of one kind or another. They're just not sure what kind. And it's okay to come to God to admit, I really don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where to go. Um, I'm not a believer in, a big, in making a big deal out of prayer in school. I think it's kind of a silly argument. I always thought it was silly. Even at the time when it first came up, they started outlawing the fact of having a, an open prayer. I thought it was kind of silly at the time when I was a kid, and I still think it's silly. And I, sometimes I, when I hear people say, you know, it's uh, kind of things went down the tubes when they took away prayer out of schools. Well, you know what? They didn't take prayer out of schools. They didn't put prayers in schools. No one legislates God. Do you know that? God is God no matter what. We have prayer no matter what. You can pray 24 hours a day. No one's going to stop you. You can be in prison and pray 24 hours a day. No one's going to stop you. Prayer cannot be legislated. God cannot be legislated. And that's why I think it's a silly argument. Pray all the time. I sometimes pray when I'm at the gas station. I pray for the person who's getting gas next to me. I sometimes pray when I'm standing in line for the person who's behind me or ahead of me. I pray very often for you. At times you don't know it. Be in constant prayer. My dad asked me if uh, it was a sin for him to fall asleep while he was praying, which he always used to do. And I would tell him, I think that's a wonderful way to fall asleep. I wish everyone would maybe do that. Fall asleep in the middle of a prayer. That's how I like to die, right in the middle of a prayer. You don't know what the big secret of life is? I'm going to tell you this morning. Is everybody ready? You might want to get out your pencils and paper. Here you go. The big secret of life is there's no secret. Isn't it? 
point blank, it's clear. It's the love of our Lord and Savior. That's it. Sharing that love, understanding that love. That's what prayer is all about. It's right there in front of us, just like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. You know, she had the power to go home all along. Click her heels three times, all she had to do. We have no idea what kind of power we're dealing with, with prayer. There's an author by the name of Andy Dillard who says, it's like playing on the floor with TNT. God may suddenly wake up beside you, answer us in a big way. You know about that dog. Did I tell you about the dog went to the telegraph office and he went up to the counter, put his paws up on the counter, and uh, this is back in the days of telegrams, and of course, and the dog put his paws up on the counter and he said, uh, woof, 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 and the guy's writing down, you know, all the woofs. And the, uh, the guy said, uh, well, you know what? He said, we have a special today. You can send a telegram with 10 words. He said, don't you want to add one more wolf to that? And the dog said, well, no, then it wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> what makes sense to us is sometimes the problem. My ways and not your ways, says God. My prayers begin here, they end there, they start up someplace else, thoughts jumbled. He knows my heart. He knows yours. And that's the important thing. So we pray persistently. Not even at times knowing what we're praying for. Eleanor Franklin, Eleanor and uh, uh, Eleanor Franklin's grandchild, uh, Eleanor and Franklin Roosevelt's grandchild, that's what I'm trying to say. I knew it was doing something wrong. What was the guy's first name? Eleanor Franklin Roosevelt's grand grandchild was asked one time about different things that happened when she was around her grandparents. And she had this great line with the reporter. She said, you know, she said, I don't know if I'm really remembering that or not. Maybe I'm just remembering the fact that you guys wrote about this. So am I really remembering the real thing that happened? Or remembering the fact that you wrote that it happened? At times, I'm not too sure what really happened. It always interests me when people say, uh, you know, I know what it's like, they tell that to someone who's 16 or something. I know what it's like being 16. I was 16 once. I know what that's like. Every time I hear that, what I secretly say to myself is, no, you don't. You think you remember what it was like being 16. Those of us who are not 16 anymore, we have no idea what it's like being 16. We know what it's like at our age, thinking back of what it was like being 16. You don't have those exact same feelings anymore. Life has changed us. It's a different matter. So we don't exactly know what's inside each other's heads. God knows what's in all of our hearts. Robert Frost said, the poet Robert Frost, forgive me my nonsense, as I also forgive the nonsense of those who think they talk sense. Good prayer to remember. Forgive me my nonsense, as I also forgive the nonsense of those who think they talk sense. I think we've lost the sense of the mystery of God. God is no longer a mystery for us. There he's totally understood one of the things of this modern day and age which I'm not real happy about is everyone, everyone thinking they have to express their opinion about everything. Everything. They're experts about everything. You know what? Whenever the church council starts talking about something to do with the property, with uh, whatever building this, building that, I don't say a word. You know why I don't say a word? Because I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about copiers. I don't know anything about ceilings. I don't know what to do with that stuff. I'm glad other people do. If I don't know, I don't know. It's a mystery to me. There are many things that are mysteries to us and we don't want to acknowledge that they're mysteries. Well, God is a mystery. Prayer is a mystery. Always has been, always will be. The circumnavigators, you know those guys that went across the globe like Magellan, Sir Francis Drake, all those guys? 
And you wonder how they can get into these teeny weeny boats and they can sail around the world, not knowing where they're going. Can you imagine? Setting out over into the ocean, into this huge mystery of the world. But I think maybe it was a little bit easier at that time for them than what it would be for us today because they believed in mystery. The whole world was a mystery to them. Where did diseases come from? They didn't know. Where did this hat come from? They didn't know. So sailing off into the distance, it being a mystery, was just part and parcel of who they were. We have lost the mystery of God a little bit. Prayer is resting in God and all of his mystery. With all of my mysterious doubts, insecurities, and fears. All I do not know. And then it's God nudging us to get out. To go. Get on your way. And do something. There was a dog who was acting really crazy, and this guy said, you know, said to the owner of the dog, he said, you know, you should really take that dog to a psychiatrist. And the owner of the dog said, well, I would, but he's not allowed on a couch. <laughs> there are so many places where we are not allowed to go. You know, most of those places probably aren't really all that important. But we are invited to be connected with the Almighty creator of the universe, the sustainer, our Lord and Savior, the one who will open eternity for us all. And you know how we're connected with him? In no other way but in humble prayer. Humble prayer. The word amen does not mean period. The word amen means it shall be so. It means now it's beginning. So are we ready to begin? Amen. Let us make confession of our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered and was crucified and was crucified.
Confident in God's compassionate rule and enduring love, let us lift up the needs of the church, the world, and all of creation. <coughs> Unite your people under the banner of Christ and give them boldness and persistence in working to fulfill your purposes throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. Bless the earth with favorable weather and encourage our efforts to join your creative work in raising plants and animals, flowers and fruit. Lord, in your mercy, watch over farmers, firefighters, gardeners, lifeguards, construction workers, police officers, and all who work outdoors to protect and provide for us. Lord, in your mercy, Renew our appreciation for the artists and musicians in this parish, parish and bless their gifts that broaden and deepen our praise and thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, we praise you for the lives of all your saints. Bring us at last to the fullness of death and life in Christ, in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Open our hearts to those who are lost or seeking. Help us to be caring and generous to all who ask for understanding, wholeness, and healing. We include in those prayers this morning Bob Sh Barb Schufelt, Nora Brandt, Ron Dockenhaus, and Tammy Miller, Cass Bolton, Leota Pedraza, and Colleen Cable, Pastor Norm Ritterling, 
Kathleen Ward, Valerie, Bob and Esther, Denny and Jackie, Dustin Brown, Anna Long and Alice Overhouse, Lucas Rosebrook and Joshua Jenny, Ken Ludeman, Linda, Roma Brown, Paul Long, Larry Zachary, and Mary Brown, Paul Cousineau, Jeff Warner, Rudy Eichhoff and Walter Thompson, Pat Badenhoff, Marjorie Downs, Pete Miller, Brent Leiter and Alexa Jennings. We pray for Paul Panny, Emma Myers, for the family of Victor Miller, for Ron Weekers and Ted Titkemeyer, Ronnie Schaefer and Irene Cordes, for Lois Weekers, Jim Pruth and Alfred and Rita Priggy, Jim Hirschberger and Jordan Jane, Jeff Kiefer, Brad Thompson, Rudy and Ann Raby and Kelly Garst, for Naomi Rhodes, George and Cindy Pope and Jamie Bosselman, for Alina Panning, Kelly Troyer and Linda Hill, Bethany Wolf, Landon Zunk and JP, for Miranda Schenk, Don and Susan Dravis, and Alice Langenhoff, Hayden Michaelis, Crystal Garcia, and Lorna Bosselman. We pray for Josh Badenhoff, Sandy Bosselman, Louisa Bevel, and Shirley Myers Pages, for KT, Betsy Mix, Mary Louise Weevil, for Audrey Schrader, Donna Norton, and Millie Miller, for Macy Glick, Stan and Eileen Maybe, and Charlotte Longren, for Melanie Simpson, Eleanor Engler, Jeannie Curtis, and Roman Stroh. For CA, Larry Ginneman, Fred Close, and Bill Winsman. For Robert Plassman, Josh Double, Norma Strayer, and Joe. For Linda Lofts, Amy Rodenball, Dave and Betty Meyer, and Marlene Kreider. For Brennan, Jeff Brown, Tammy Porter, and Allie Grace Small. For Ruth M. Eichhoff, Carol Barron, Lucas King, and Dick Brown. For Sarah Lenhart, Deb Schenk, and Andrew Williams, and all those we name now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those in our congregational family who will be celebrating their birthdays in this coming week. We pray for Ruth Ann Weiss and Jamie Glick, for Kyle Spieth and Jean Walters, for Rachel Hooks and Daryl Jones, Marvin Raby, Joanne Denny, Jenna Pepper, Elaine Morselman, and Mark Glick. We pray on their anniversaries for Chris and Amber Reed, for David and Susan Cooper, and Alfred and Rita Priggy. We also pray, Lord God, for those serving in the military from this our congregation and this our country, including Mike Dimache, Elizabeth Yoder, Tyler Hayes, and Austin Oberg. Be with them and bless them and keep them in your heavenly grace. God of mercy, hear the cries of your people and answer us according to your steadfast love. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ,
May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.